The purpose of this video is to give you a brief set of instructions so that you know how to calculate various summary statistics in StatCrunch. So you'll notice that the tracheal resection data set is open in StatCrunch. The purpose of this is because it corresponds to the example that was posted in the Chapter 2 notes. Now, in the notes, what we calculated was we calculated various, various summary statistics for the age at surgery variable. Now, in order to calculate the summary statistics, you will not go to the graphics menu. The graphics menu is basically reserved for any type of graphical display that you would create. For any type of calculation, we'll go to the stat menu instead. And you'll see that the first choice in the stat menu is summary statistics. And in our case, we would like to select various columns to summarize because the columns of our worksheet correspond to each individual variable. Now, in the window that pops up, you'll see that again, just like the histogram and pie chart and bar graph windows, you're asked to select various columns. Now, here's one word of warning. You'll notice that in the select column, you're able to select every column in the data set. However, we only had two variables that were interval ratio in nature. That was age at surgery and the length in centimeters of the resection. Now, the other variables were not interval ratio. They were just nominal in nature, and it is not appropriate to select those and describe those with summary statistics. So when you do describe variables using the summary statistics option, make for sure that you only select those that are interval ratio in nature. Now, in the notes, I only selected age, age at surgery, and you got a table that contained various summary statistics in it. In this case, I'm going to select both age at surgery and resection and show you the output that you get if two variables are selected. So with these two variables clicked over, if we click Calculate, we'll have a table that contains the calculations for the summary statistics that were discussed in Chapter 2. So you'll see that the first row of our table corresponds to what was in the Chapter 2 notes. It gives you various summary statistics for the variable age at surgery. The second row contains those same summary statistics, this time though for the resection variable. Now, in the second column you have N, which just stands for your sample size. The next column is your sample mean. The notation that was used in the book was capital M. In the next column you have the variance. While the variance was briefly mentioned in the text, the only purpose that this function serves is to help us calculate what the standard deviation is, which was discussed more in depth. Now, in the next column, what you have, this stands for standard error. The standard error will come into play when we do inference, but for the time being, we're not going to discuss this quantity. And then your last six measures are measures of position to an extent. At first we have the median, so that corresponded to the 50th percentile of our data. The range is the difference between the max and the min. And then the last two statistics are the first and third quartile, or the 25th and 75th percentile. Now, you'll notice that when I opened up this data set, in the My Results for this data bar to the left-hand side of the screen, my histogram for the age at surgery and the pie chart that I created earlier are both there. So if we wanted to pull the summary statistics into a report, you would have to make for sure that you export that table to your results. Again, just give it a descriptive title, and if we were to click export, it would show up in the My Results for this data, for this data bar. If you have any questions on calculating summary statistics, please let me know. Hopefully, this will help you complete some of the summary or the self-practice problems that are given for Chapter 2.